right? Does it work? The who? Oh, the devil. <laughs> You're evil. Okay, back to this problem. Um, I think I said 20. This is way back when I was talking about inverse functions and how to, you know, why we need inverse functions to solve things. And I gave this as an example. The first one, of course, I gave was, you know, if you have 2 to the x is equal to 16, x is equal to what? 4. <laughs> but that only is applicable if you know what power you're talking about. So I need something to be able to get x by itself. And the function that I want to talk about is, how would you describe solving for this x? You'd be like, well, what power do I have to raise? Maybe I should make this a 3. Let's make it a 3, because then the language becomes a little bit better. 3 to the x equals 20. What power do I have to raise 3 to to get an answer of 20? I mean, that's the question I'm going to be asking myself. Here it was, what power do I have to raise 2 to to get to 16? And the power was 4. So my question is, what power... Functions technically can be designed around that type of question. So mathematicians hated writing all these words out. You know, it makes sense, and the English isn't too bad, except for that two two. Two two. I forget the ones that got double zeros, double O's, or not, but oh well. They changed it to be this. That asks the question. They write L O G, and all that says is. What power do I raise? L-O-G, what power do I raise? The base down here, 3, tells you what the base is going to be. So what power do I raise? 3, 2. And then the 20 says, to get an answer of 20. So this would actually literally equal x. Now, finding these powers is a little bit trickier. So a um, long time ago when I learned this stuff, there were tables. You actually had to look up tables of logarithms to find out solutions before calculators were around a lot. Um, of course, I cheated because <laughs> I had a calculator, so I would just hit the log button. But the tables taught you a lot about what the properties of logarithms were, so I wish they would somewhat go back to them. All right, so this actually solves for x. x is by itself. It's equal to what power do I raise 3 to to get to 20? Solved. Done. Except for one problem. No clue what that's equal to. But I can at least work with it a little bit and then eventually start using the calculator. Right now you can't use the calculator on that. Calculators don't understand log base 3. So when we write a logarithm, the b is the same base as the exponential base. So if you're talking about an exponential base function, it's called b. If you're talking about a log base b function, the b is also the base. It's written a little small, and it's written a little low. So don't bring it too high and too big, because then you'll just confuse it with the problem. The x, of course, is the domain, and eventually it's going to be equal to y. Now, the nice thing about logarithms, well, let's, let's do a couple of simple examples of them. For instance, I should be able to calculate out this log. If you read it as a question, the answer is obvious. What power do I have to raise 2 to to get to 4? The answer is 2. Log base 5 of 1. What power do I have to raise 5 to to get to 1? 0. Log base um, 3, 1, 9. What power do I have to raise 3 to to get to 1, 9? Negative 2. So calculating logarithms really isn't that hard. Um, log base 10 of 10 is equal to 1. Log base b of b to the 7th power.
Oh, I stumped you. What power do you have to raise b to to get an answer that is b raised to the seventh power? Seven. 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 All right. So that's one part of logarithms. It's not that hard to calculate out as long as they're perfect logs. If they get a little weird, then it takes a little bit of time. Um, the other property, the main property, is this. The one that you're going to use most often. If you have a base b raised to the x is equal to y, you can replace it with its equivalent expression in logarithmic form. This is your loggy, froggy thing. Um, the base doesn't change, so we want to change it into a log. The base is? Y, no, B. What's the base over here? B. B, so the base doesn't change, B. Now, you just got to think of this like inverse functions. The domain and range are going to flip. So it's log base B of the other side, which is? y, and this would equal x. So your x and y is basically flipped because technically these two functions are inverse functions. This one says if I take base, uh, base b, raise it to the exponent x, I get an answer of y. This one says if I take uh, what is the base that I have to raise b to to get an answer of y, and that exponent is x. So for instance, if I have e to the 2x is equal to y plus 4, how do I change that into its logarithmic form? Well, the first thing you write down is... Mm. Log. Log. What's the base? E. e. What's the answer? y plus 4. What's it equal to? The power, which is... 2x. So they just kind of flip around. All right. What if you start with a logarithm? If you have log base 7 of uh, 5x is equal to y minus 3, how do I change that to an exponential? Exponentials always start off with... How do exponentials start off? With a base. What's the base? Seven. What's the power? Y minus three. What's it equal to? Five x. And that's it. So they interchange rather quickly, and 90% of the rest of the chapter can be solved this way, can be manipulated this way. In other words, if you don't like it in logarithmic form, switch it over to exponential form, see if it's better. If you don't like it in exponential form, switch it over to the form to see if it's any better. So it becomes kind of a quick way of going about it. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do that. That's easy. All right. So let's talk about them in inverse language. Now, a lot of people get confused between converting it from a logarithm to an exponential or vice versa and using the inverse properties. And technically, you can usually skip the inverse properties and just do it by conversion. Because technically, when you write one side and the other, they're inverses automatically because you've taken the domain and range and switched them, which is all inverses there. But the book talks about inverse properties, so here's what it is. If f of x is equal to b to the x, then f inverse of x is equal to log base b of x. That's literally their inverse uh, function property. If you have inverse functions, oh, um, by the way, what's the domain of base b to the x, whether b is uh, 0 to 1 or 1 to infinity. What's the domain? Remember what the graph looks like? 
hugs the x-axis, shoots up. So what's the domain? Negative infinity to infinity. What was the range? Zero to infinity. So if these are inverse functions, then the domain over here better be zero to infinity, and the range better be negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Uh, let me graph them. Quick little graph. I'll do B is bigger than one graph. B bigger than one, the basic graph looks like this. How do you graph the inverse of a graph of a function? You take all the coordinates and you switch them. So this is like negative 3, 1, 8. So that's going to become 1, 8. Negative 3, right? So that would be someplace down here. So instead of having the hug on the negative x-axis, the hug is going to be on the negative y-axis. This goes through the point 0, 1. That one's going to go through the point 1, 0. So a logarithm graph, oops, wrong color, looks like this. Hugs the negative y-axis, goes through the point 1, 0, and goes off like that. Remember, it flips over that line y equals x, so if you turn your head 45 degrees, these two graphs should look very symmetric over the y equals x line. So that's what a logarithm graph looks like. Between 0 and 1, the thing is negative. After 1, the graph is positive. Where exponential, grow, uh, exponential graphs grow very rapidly, logarithm graphs grow very slowly. They take a long time to go up a little bit. Um, so there's other properties of logarithms that I'm not going to talk about. All right, if I take log base b and raise it to, or take it of b to the x, the answer is let me ask another silly question then before that. If I take f and I take its composition with f inverse, what's its answer automatically? One takes it to y, the other one brings it back to x. So the answer is x. Now compose inverse functions, your answer is automatically x, the domain. So what happens when I take log base b, which is one function, and b to the x, which is composed within it, they are inverse functions to begin with, so their answer better be x. Remember I wrote this one down earlier, log base b of b to the seventh, and we all fussed it up. <laughs> no, the answer can't be, and the answer was 7. It's just 7. It's whatever that exponent was to begin with. If you have... This is harder to write. b raised to the log base b of x, this answer is also going to be its x. Because you have your b to the function, and then you have your log base b function, and those two functions are going to, don't say cancel, but they go poof, if you want to say anything. They go poof, and you're left with x. Isn't that weird? This one over here, that's harder to see because most people don't like looking at an exponent that's very complex. This one's easier to see. So there's another notation you can, um, no, we can't use that notation. That only works with E. That is too bad. There is a notation for E, which is very nice. All right. On your calculator, there's something called a common log. And the common log is just this. If you have a logarithm, its base is 10, then all you have to write is log. And it's understood you have a base of 10. 
So when you type in log something on your calculator, you're doing log base 10. So on your calculator, do log log 10. Your answer better come out to be 1. It better come out to 1 because it's what power do you raise 10 to to get to 10? And the other one is natural log. And the natural log is log base e of x. And on your calculator, it is ln of x. ln of x. So if you see log of 1,000, what's the answer? Don't type it in your calculator. Use your brain. 10 to the what power gives you 1,000? 10 to the 10th power? No, Yeah, now I'm really worried. <laughs> 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. That's 10 cubed. <clears throat> ln of e to the 4th power is equal to, without the calculator, comes back to this. Ln means it has a base of e. What power do you have to raise e to to get e to the seventh? Oh, I'm sorry, e to the fourth. Four. Ln of e to the fourth is four because they're inverse functions; they cancel out. You're left with a four. Okay, so those come in handy, and I think that's most of what I wanted to talk about in that part of the book. I mean, there's graphs of logarithms, but they're a little bit more confusing than exponentials, and they're not that important. We already talked about the domain, we talked about natural. Yeah, we should be able to do most of those. All right, that leads us to 4.3, which is more important. And I got, woohoo, half an hour. 4.3.